In part 3 we will be working the thumb and the individual fingers. Written instructions to this glove pattern can be purchased from the website. We're going to begin row 18. Now knit the next 4 onto needle 3. After knitting 4 onto needle 3 you'll note that the last stitch was the previous yarn over. Without working the next 15 stitches go to the last 4 stitches on needle 1 and slip them onto the left needle which will be needle 2. Once that is done we'll have our separated stitches ready to begin working. So double check you have 15 stitches. Now get a circular needle or stitch holder and place the remaining stitches on hold for now. So they're, they're on a holder. Just pop that out of the way. So I'm going to, with my 15 stitches, I'm going to increase to 16. So I'm going to make one by knitting into the back of the next stitch. And I'm going to knit 6. So that's my increase. And then I'm going to 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six. Call that needle A, and I'm going to knit the remaining eight stitches onto needle B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now what we've got. They're basically two lots of eight ready to work in rounds. I'm going to work four more rounds. So this is round one. So knit four rounds, stockinette stitch. And then after we've done four plain rounds, we'll do a knit one purl one rib for four rounds also. With the four rows done in stockinette stitch, I'm just going to do ribbed for four rows now. So I've so knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and just continue that for a total of four rounds and then cast off. Now I have a tip for you when casting off. So in most cases you just cast off and pull through the very last stitch. But I have this um, little thing that I do whereby I search for the first cast off stitch, which I can see is there, and in a kind of crochet style I try and go underneath the two bars of that cast off stitch, like so, and I just knit through it and cast off and I just find that that marries the edges nicely. Just gives a nicer finish and then obviously darn that on the inside. We're now going to pick up five stitches along the base of the thumb and in the centre of the thumb 
um, that's going to be our new beginning and end point. So, all right, what I'm going to do is begin knitting these stitches back onto double pointed needles. What, what I'm going to do is pick up five stitches overall. I'm going to put the first three that I pick up onto the end of this needle. So let's rejoin our yarn and I'll show you what I mean. So we'll pick up three. That's number one, number two, number three. So just try and go through the centre of the stitches if you can. And you can always go back and redo them if you're not happy with how you've picked up the stitches. So slip those three onto the end. Then we're going to pick up another two stitches, making five in all. And we're going to resume rounds. That's one. That's two. Not forgetting that that was our previous wool forward, which is in fact a stitch, so don't forget to knit that. As long as you know where your starting point, you can divide your stitches evenly over three double pointed needles at this point. So this is needle one. And I'm just going to put a marker here just so that I remember that that's going to be my new starting point. So we've got our hand section completed. We've done 10 rows. We've got our marker still in position that's in line with the centre of the thumb. What I'm going to do now is use my holder again, which is my circular needle. I'm just going to slip all the stitches back on hold. And then I'm going to select some stitches from the very beginning of the holder and the very end of the holder um, for my index finger. I find that this holder method works quite well. It just means you can slip the first and last set of stitches very easily. So from the holder we want the first and last six stitches onto needles A and B. So that's needle A. Six from needle B, and then we just want these on hold till we're ready. And then, if you see what we've done, is we've got our first finger ready working in rounds and if you notice it's all centered on the side so that it's even so what we do is we for needle A we knit five and then increase one through the back of the last stitch then we work needle B. Needle B we begin by making an increase into the back of the next stitch. And then knit one, two, three, four, five, 
So we now have 14 stitches ready to work in rounds. Let's go. And then we're going to complete after that four rounds of knit one, purl one rib. So I'll complete the first round. So same idea as the thumb. So this is row five of the stockinette stitch round. After I've completed this round, I'm going to do a knit one, purl one rib for four rows and then cast off. So look, we've got our index finger completed here and we complete the other fingers in much a similar way. I'm out of camera. Yeah, so it's a combination of slipping stitches from the end of your holder and also picking up stitches at the base of the last finger. So slip five from two, two four, five. Yeah, so you want five from each end of the holder. So we've got our index, not index, we've got our middle finger there ready to go. We just need to pick up some stitches at the base of our index finger. So if we rejoin the yarn, we can pick up four stitches along here. I try and go through the middle of a stitch tends to work work out best. So that's one. Let's go through there. Two. Three. Four. Then I'm going to knit five from the holder onto this same needle and call that needle A. I'm going to knit five for needle B and to even things out I'm going to knit the first two stitches that you saw me pick up and put them onto needle B. Let's get those off. Just to just to even it out. So where's my let's pull that in tight. Right, so that's my first very first round. I've got 14 stitches now and I'm going to work needles A and B for five rounds just as I did before. Just finishing the middle finger here. Now repeat what you've just done for that middle finger and apply it to the ring finger. It's exactly the same. So join me for the baby finger where the amount of stitches you pick up at the base of the finger is just slightly different. All right, how exciting. We're nearly finished. Um, just the baby finger to do. So we should have 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So divide those 10 over two needles. At the base of the previous finger, Pick up two stitches. This will mean that in total you'll have 12. After picking up two stitches, you'll have a total of 12 to work in the round. Just as the other fingers, work five rounds of stockinette stitch and then four rounds of knit one, purl one rib. And that will be all of your fingers completed. For this cord, what I've gone and done is cut about four metres off and then folded it exactly in half, like so. Now really you should use a friend to do this, but as I don't have anyone here to help, I'm going to twist, use, I'm going to use my teacup 
is my little friend. So my teacup is going to hold the end, one end of the yarn for me whilst I'll, I twist the other end. I don't know if you can see that. So basically the, what you're doing is that. But I'm going to have to go right from the other end which is two metres away. And I'm going to just keep twisting. I'll probably do this for about 10 minutes until I'm satisfied that I've got um, a nice twist going on. So once I'm happy that I've twisted it enough, I'm then going to fold it in half and make the ends meet like so. And before I kind of let, let it go, because there's tension in this, um, I just get it nice and flat because what's going to happen, in fact I'll move those pom-poms, as you can see, is it, it binds together. So you let go and just keep stretching it like elastic and it eventually forms a very nice cord. The more effort you put in, do, double, do another knot actually, the more twisting you do the tighter the cord seems to get. So, move that rubbish out of the way. So once it's sorted itself out and you've just gone like that a few times, you're left with this really quite attractive rope effect. Roughly there. that through. Once you have the cords in place you then attach the pom-poms. Get your free pom-pom template guides from my website thecastingoncouch.com and please check out my other video that shows you how to make pom-poms. If you successfully manage to complete these gloves, I'd love to hear from you. Send me a video post. Thanks for watching.